buying a new home can easily get really expensive from the lot premiums to like the design center. So we're gonna go over some strategies on how you're gonna save some money and how to get the most for your hard earned cash when you go ahead and buy a new home from one of these national new builders. And at the end, I'm gonna share with you the slickest strategy I have to finding the best deals on new homes. Number one thing you have to do is be ready to negotiate. You gotta know there's a few things that you could negotiate on and some things that you can't. The hardest part to negotiate is the price. Uh, a lot of times they're not budging from that. Now you might say, well, what else is negotiable? I mean, what else is there? It's just the price. There's actually a lot of things that go into buying a new home from like the interest rates to closing costs to upgrades, uh, you know, appliances. All those things have dollar amounts next to them. Yeah, the price is the biggest thing, but there's these other little factors that if you're able to do some good negotiations, you're able to save some money that way. Now, I know a lot of people that talk about they, they're good negotiators, right? They might feel a little uncomfortable asking for price reductions. Here in California, we don't really have a culture of negotiations. I mean, when I went, I went furniture shopping with my wife, who was at the time my girlfriend, and I was buying a sofa. And when I went to go buy the sofa, I was like, hey, can you throw this in? Can you throw that in? I'll, I'll buy it if instead of $700, I'll buy it at $600, but that has to include like shipping and taxes out the door. And of course, the sales lady was like, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, that's something that we don't really don't do here. I got her to ask the manager. The manager came back and we negotiated. My wife, uh, or my, she was my girlfriend then, I asked her like, don't you negotiate when you do things? And she was like, no, no, she's totally, you know, conflict adverse. She doesn't want to have that conflict of asking, of negotiating, of asking for something. So she stays away from that, she says. And, and I get it, you know, most people are want to stay away from that type of conflict. They're not used to negotiating, you know, every little thing. Uh, now, I wouldn't go to like Best Buy and try to negotiate anything there. That's just, I think that's, you know, that's not how they do it. But uh, furniture stores, real estate, closing costs, upgrade appliances, you know, when it comes to the build, new build, yeah, those are all things that you can negotiate. You know, they're used to that. They're expecting that. Salesperson is expecting you to ask for a discount on a bunch of things. Because if not, they're gonna say, man, this person's leaving so much on the table, they're giving money away. It's not it's not in your best interest to not ask. So definitely be ready to get uncomfortable, ask for discounts. And if you can't do it, then definitely get a real estate agent, hire a real estate agent like myself, that's gonna look out for your best interest and help you with that. Uh, when you hire a real estate agent, most of the times, the seller is already gonna pay them a commission. So it's nothing extra out of your pocket. Now rules are changing. So make sure that you get that conversation done and out of the way. As a real estate broker, when you hire me, we go through that and I say, hey, this is what everything's really gonna cost you. Cause when you work with me, you're gonna save money. That's just the bottom line, right? If Why work with me if you're not gonna save anything, you know? Definitely hire a real estate agent if you are uncomfortable with asking for discounts. They're also gonna be able to help you shop around for a better loan. Now these builders are getting really aggressive, so to beat their lenders, uh, it's gonna be really tough, but always shop around. That's another thing, whether you're buying a new house or whatever house, always shop around for a loan. I'm a real estate broker, I'm also a mortgage lender. If you say, Oscar, I want a second opinion on this, what's the best you can do? Am I on the right path? Yeah, I'll go over the numbers with you, no cost, no obligation, check that out, give me a call, send me an email, we'll do that. Uh, I'll do that for you, no problem. And that way you know if you're getting a, a good deal or not. Now obviously if I could win the business, great, you know, that's uh, more money in my family's bank account. If not, at least you know you're getting the best deal possible, right? This is a new community that's opening up in Ontario and they're continually building. Ontario, Chino, Eastvale, there's new homes all the time. Here's one example on what one of the kitchens would look like. Here's what they're selling them for. Something to keep in mind with new construction, new communities are the taxes and the HOAs. Those things can blow your budget right out the water. You know, we're talking about an extra five to $800 per month. That's like 100,000 to you know, $1,000 worth of buying power. Here are some other great homes you might want to be, inter you might be interested in. Here's some other homes that you might like. And why new communities? Well, they have all these amenities, right? Like um, pools and new shopping centers being built and parks. I'm in one of the parks right now. Here's a quick tour of what one would look like. Here's what the community pool looks like. It's, it's at the end of January and I'm out here and it's really hot. So I don't know if it's hot enough to go swimming, but it, it's still nice. It's nice to have a pool right across the street from one of the homes, right? Now, almost anything in a home can be upgraded from the appliances, the paint color, the cabinets, the flooring, the lighting, the light bulbs, you know, uh, the ring cameras, all those things can be upgraded. And a lot of times these builders get special discounts on certain 
parts of the home like uh, let's say for example appliances they might get a good deal on you know the stoves and the refrigerators and stuff like that what you want to do is it goes back to negotiating again is that every upgrade that you want to do ask for them to include it in that sale price so i want all this stuff included that's why i want these upgraded things you know and they're going to tell you no right because if i was uh, selling a house i first question first time someone asks is no but what I could do and what the sell what the seller and the builder is probably gonna say is like what I could do I could give you a deal on these things and those things let's say appliances is probably what they got a good deal on themselves so just move they're just moving that savings onto you it's not costing them anything extra just say I saved on that I move that over to to the buyer makes them happy and I could close this deal because that's what the salespeople want to do they just want to close these deals and, and move on you know and remember if you never ask that answer is always going to be no so keep that in mind don't be afraid to ask for all these things and you can always pit one builder against another you know you could be negotiating negotiating with two different builders you know at the same time to see who's going to give you the best deal um that's a lot it takes a lot of time because you're probably going to be leaning to one towards the other and you don't want to get a good deal but be unhappy right but again you can say oh well this builder is including these things and this builder is including that thing so let's see again see how far you can get once you've exhausted everything at least you know you got the best deal that you could possibly get once you're tired and the salesperson's tired before they start hanging up on you you know what i mean uh but yeah so just keep asking for something and if you like the info that i'm sharing with you go ahead and hit that like button and if you want more info on what's going on in our community i do home tours and video tours and community tours on all these communities and if you go ahead and subscribe you'll be updated on what's going on around here what it's like to live here in the inland empire in southern california all right here's the other thing it sounds like it costs you money but it, at the end it's going to save you are your home inspections uh the state of california says that every home builder has to warranty certain items for a certain period of time so like one year for let's say for example um you know the doorknobs or something uh two years for like the roofs right and then 10 years for like the foundation okay uh, when you do your home inspection some builders allow home inspector to your private home inspector that you hired not theirs but yours that you vetted and i'm going to share with you how to vet them as well um, your inspector might have to go after closing sometimes they're allowed to go before so they can pick out and you know they say oh this is done wrong this is done right this is not done to building code because here's the deal these home builders they're in it to make a profit and the way they make a profit is to sell something for the highest price and it'd be the lowest expense for them so they're trying to make that spread as high as possible and how do they do that maybe they hire the cheapest subcontractor the cheapest roofer the cheapest framers those guys are cheap because they cut corners now you don't want to be the one that's having to pay for those repairs of these guys who are cutting corners so your home specter points these things out and then they'll have to go back you know the one the buyers that don't do this are the ones that they're able to save money on unfortunately for those homeowners those problems that they cut corners on yeah they're, they're going to creep up on them you know further in the year hopefully not sometimes you never even hear of anything but i mean a lot of times you do so but if you get your home inspector to check things out before closing right after closing at that 10 month mark so they can uh, point out all the one year warranty issues at that 22 month mark, right? And if you say, well, Oscar, I don't even know any home inspectors. I live, uh, you know, a different state. I don't even, you know, who, who knows home inspectors? Well, I could send you some recommendations, the people I use. And if you're interviewing some, you can ask them, hey, so how many home inspections do you do on new homes? What do you typically see from certain builders? Like what does KB Homes do? What does Lennar Homes do? What does uh, Taylor Morrison do? What do you always see from these guys, right? And they may say, oh yeah, you know where they're always cutting corners is the roof flashing, whatever, right? I'm just using an example, you know? Um, and you say, okay, cool. So you, you kind of know what to look out for. If they say, oh no, they're all good and everything's good. And, that's not true these homes aren't perfect there's always a problem every home has an issue i can tell you that no, no matter what because there's nothing perfect right someone messed up somewhere it might not be major uh hopefully it's not but you're gonna have these issues so you want to vet those uh home inspectors by ask, you know interview them ask them those questions get like two or three see what they do you know ask them like what do you do during a home inspection what do you look for do you have that uh thermal camera you know and um yeah, you'll be spending more on these home inspections, but you're not left holding the bag when, when a problem arises. You wanna find all these issues so that the builder can fix it. You're paying top dollar, so why shouldn't you have a finished product the way they say they're gonna deliver it? 
You know what I mean? It's not like you're buying a used house. If you're buying a used house, you do your home inspection. Yeah, the roof's messed up. All right, it is what it is. Do you still want the house or not? No, you're buying a new build, a new home. So you want those things done the right way. And so you have your home tip top shape when it's closed with the help of that home inspector. So don't skimp on that. That's going to save you money. Yeah, not up front, but in the long run, it will. And a lot of times you're going to be surprised of what the city home inspector overlooks that your home inspector is going to find. You're going to be thinking to yourself, how do they, so I can see it. How do they miss it? Right? Well, that's just how it is. You know, it is what it is. The design center. Here is something that people go in there and then they leave spending 10, 20, 30, $40,000 more in certain homes because they wanted an upgraded flooring and an upgraded paint. You know, they want to go from this gray to that gray, you know, from this beige to that beige, from this gray to that gray, whatever, right? A way to save on it is to get contractors that you know outside to give you quotes. You know, you could send them the floor plan. You could say, hey, let's go look at this model home. What would it cost to change it to this color? What would they charge you? So when you go to the design center and they say, I want to upgrade for like, you know, the new paint, $8,000. Your contractor may say, no, I could do that same job for like 4000 For example, I'm just using numbers. You're able to save that way. So you say, no, I don't, don't give me the upgrade. Give me the regular. I have, I'm going to bring in a painter. Another way is that some builders give you like, they call it like a credit, like let's call it a flooring credit. Let's talk about flooring. There's going to be a flooring credit. We'll give you $5,000 towards any flooring that you want to put in uh, and they'll give you their options. Here are the four options. There's the, the $5,000 one, right? The basic. And then there's ones that are more expensive, seven, 10, whatever the number is, right? You may say, okay, I found a flooring contract, a licensed, bonded, insured flooring contractor that's going to do this job for $4,000. So go ahead and give me that $5,000 credit. Don't install nothing. I'm going to get it done after close, right? Sometimes you're able to get away with that. Other times the builder's like, no, we have to give you flooring because the bank's going to make sure that you need flooring. Overall, you find what an outside contractor is going to charge you. See if you can get that reduced as a credit towards closing, not like off the sale price because that doesn't really change your monthly payment too much. But you want to save on your hard costs, you know, your down payment that you're going to have to be bringing in. If you, could, if you have to come in with $50,000, but you got a $5,000 flooring credit, now you only have to come in with $45,000. Well, that's real money. That's your $5,000. It's actually in your bank account that you could then use for your flooring or whatever it is that you want to do. So that's another way you can save is by using outside contractors after close to do your upgrades. Just make sure they're licensed, insured, and then bonded and look up their license. You can go on the California website. This is it right here. This is how I check, you know, uh, who's licensed, who's not. It even shows a picture of the contractor so you know it's not the guy's cousin or something. You know what I mean? And also keep in mind when you went into that model showroom, that model home, they have top notch designers, interior designers, deck out that whole place with all the upgrades. What you see there is like the top of the line of what they have to offer. And if you want that, you're gonna be paying top of the line. So what you fell in love with is not what your home is gonna look like. So just keep that in mind as well. So this is the super slick strategy strategy on how I'm able to help some homeowners get into new communities and new homes for less than what they think they had to pay. These are called new builder closeout. What is that? So this is what happens. Buyer comes in, they say, oh yeah, I want to buy this lot and I want to buy this house and they sign the contract, they put their deposit, right? They're building their house. Four months later, they, they go to the design center and say, I want this blue and this gray and this whatever. And they design the whole house and they build it up. They put in everything. And then a month or so before closing, something happens to that buyer. They got sick, divorce, lose the job, job transfer. Who knows, right? Something terrible or not so good happens to the buyer and they're unable to complete the transaction. You know, something happened to their credit, whatever it is. They can't get the loan. They can't close the deal. So what happens to this builder? This builder said, but see, I, I built this house and now I'm stuck with this finished house. Part of the appeal of buying a new home construction is going to that design center and designing your home the way you want it to be, right? You say, well, I'm going to buy a home. I'm going to design it the way I want it. You know, I pick my own colors, right? But now they have this house that's like, well, somebody else picked it. Now they don't go crazy with the colors. Like they don't put pink and purples and greens. No, that's all around the same blue, white, gray and, and beige type of color. So it's because this, this happens. People are unable to buy it. They have to cancel the deal. And then now they have to sell that home. A lot of times they sell it at a discount. One, you don't have to wait for it to be built. It's already done. Two, they're selling it at a, a better price because they need to unload it. They say, we put this money into this house. We need to get this unloaded as quickly and as fast as possible. So those home builder closeouts are a way to save money 
as well. Now you won't be able to pick your own colors because it's already done, right? But you don't have to wait. You can get today's interest rate. You don't know what's gonna happen in six months. And you could probably buy it at a discount. Now you say, how do I get a hold of these builder closeouts? So I do a lot of community tours. So every time I go in, I ask, hey, what do you have available like right now? So uh, today move in ready we call them move in ready homes we have this one and we have that one and it's at this price and at that price instead of you paying 675 for example it's 655 because we know that we got to give a discount on this now they're not losing money for the most part they're just not making as much right uh, the builder that is so that's a way to get it you know the builder closeouts now you say Oscar I'm far away I can't go to these communities how do I do that well give me a call I'll be able anytime I get any updates I'll add you to that mailing list and I'll send you what those updates are again if you're far away I don't know what your timeline is you may not be too interested in what today's up you know uh, uh, closeouts are going to be when you get closer to making a move we work together and I'll be able to share with you like look this is a deal here and now you have a choice you can decide I want to go with that deal or I want to go the other route you know build my own home and make me and you're able to pick the colors right now if you're in now these are some homes here in Ontario and if you're interested in the next community up in Rancho Cucamonga I did a video on maybe why you should buy in Rancho right now or actually wait it might even be beneficial for you to wait so go ahead and check out that video and if you want any more info on you have a specific question or something like that go ahead and send me a text an email or comment and you know down here uh, feel free to reach out I'm here to help you guys until then I'll check you guys out